Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle. For those of you who do not know me, hi, welcome. I'm so glad you stopped by today. Today I am doing my favorites and my least favorites of 2018. These are, some of these are products that came out in 2018. Some of these are products that I tried in 2018. Um, we're going to start off with my least favorite products. I have 10 in each category, just so you are aware, but we're going to start off with the bad and end with the good. <laughs> so one thing I should say is that these are in no particular order. We're going to go ahead and get started. The first one I do not have in my collection any longer. I ended up using it up and that is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I really did not like this concealer. To me, it was not thick enough. It was not what I wanted in a concealer and it also kind of left little kind of lines on my skin and when I would set it with a powder it would become really like crepey if that makes sense. Like the powder just would not and I tried a bunch of different powders. I tried pressed powders. I tried loose powders. It just was not working for my skin. <laughs> at all and I tried and tried and tried. So that is one of the items that I just did not like from 2018. The other one, and this bottle's disgusting, so I apologize. I'm trying to use this foundation up. It just, it, it's a mess, okay? <laughs> that is the ColourPop No Filter Foundation. This, just like the concealer, just does not like my skin. It does not like me. I have pretty normal to dry skin and this, it just, no. The color, the color I will say on both products is really, really good. Like this matches my skin so, so well. Um, but it like settled into my lines around here. It would come off of my nose. I'd be missing like weird patches on my skin and I tried a bunch of different primers. I tried oils under it. I tried all kinds of stuff. I tried nothing under it and I still had these problems. So I don't know what it is about ColourPop's complexion products in my skin, but they just do not like me. <laughs> so there's that. I do have other items here from ColourPop. These are the ColourPop Supernova shadows. These, the two I have here are Moonlit and Firecracker. I believe I decluttered one of them because it just was awful, but I really don't like these and I'm someone who really enjoys liquid eyeshadows. I don't, I don't like these. I've been finding that they crease on my eyes. Um, they make my eyes look very aged. Like when I put them on, they get like all these wrinkles and just like any line in my eye shows <laughs> or my eyelid, not my eye. You know what I mean. But I just, I don't love them. I feel like if they did something different, I know that the, some people say certain ones work better than others. And like these out of the ones I purchased are the ones that worked better. But I just don't understand why <laughs> it was so, so bad. They just, they, they just don't work. I don't know. I'd rather use my Stila ones. Even my Dollar Shop Miss A ones are better than these, in my opinion. Okay. So the next item I have here is the Color Girl Melting Pout Matte Lipstick. This one is in Back Talk. This is the only one I have. I believe I had like four or five that I wanted to give away. And this one is the one that works the best out of all of those other ones, but they all kind of have the same problem for me. They are very streaky on the lips. And even when I was like trying to really get the color, I don't want to put four to five layers on my lips to get it that way, especially with a matte lipstick of any kind. I do not want it that much on there because then my lips just get dry, dry, dry. And at first I thought it was a problem with me putting like a lip balm underneath because that's usually what I do with any liquid lipstick I wear is I wear a lip balm underneath it. Um, it's just more comfortable on my lips. It still stays, it still dries down, but my lips are not like Sahara Desert dry. <laughs> um, but this just did not, just did not work like when I did that. And then, so I was like, okay, maybe it's that. So I took that off, didn't wear anything. And then I was like, no, this is just not working. It, they, they're just super streaky. I just really like this color. And until I find like a dupe for it, I just don't want it out of my collection because it's not like any of the other purples I have. Okay, the next I the next item I have here 
is the Pure Bronze and Brighten. So I've tried to use this a few times. Um, I don't mind the blush and I don't really mind, well, uh, I mind the blush a little bit. I don't mind the highlighter. So like if the highlighter was all on its own, it would be pretty decent. But the blush and the bronzer, they are just too shimmery. I am not somebody who likes a very shimmery bronzer at all. I'm not somebody who often wears bronzer if I'm at all honest. And a shimmery blush I can usually handle, but this one... It's just, it's too shimmery. Like, to me, that's more like a shimmer eyeshadow than, like, wanting that on my cheeks. Now, mind you, it'd be diffused, but, like, super, super shimmery. And the bronzer, it's the same way. So, I just can't imagine, mind you, and I also think that that bronzer is way too dark for me currently, but it's just not something that I really like, and it's still in my collection. All of these things are still in my collection, uh, and, like, don't get me wrong, I'm thinking about decluttering. I'm having a very hard time decluttering, and I'm getting ready to start a declutter series, so, yeah, Danielle's, Danielle's struggling with that concept of getting rid of right now just so everyone's aware. These are things I should declutter. So one thing I know for sure that I'm decluttering is this gosh darn horrible, awful, freaking gel eyeliner that we got in BoxyCharm. This is the Bang Beauty Chocolate Gel Eyeliner. Like, can you guys see? I've tried to use that so many freaking times and it's just, it is so dry. Like, that's not how a gel eyeliner should be. And I've even put, like, oil on this, and it's just like, nope, we're just going to be dry. We're just going to be dry and crumbly. Like, this does not work as a gel eyeliner. I've even tried it in my brows, and in all honesty, it does not work for your brows either. It is just the worst thing that I have ever tried in my life. So this one, for sure, will probably be in a declutter video very soon, foreshadowing for sure, because it's just awful, and I don't know why I still have it. And also, this is not something I would declutter and pass along to anyone. This is something I would declutter and it would go in the trash. And that's just it, how bad it is. Like, I could not give this to anyone. I would feel bad giving it to someone. Like, no. Then we have the Jante Blue Glittering Star Eyeliner. At first, I thought I liked this eyeliner. At first. But then I tried to put it on my upper lid and just under and just the, the way they put the glitter in, it is not something that really works for putting on your eyes. Like eyeliner should not have glitter in it unless it's like a liquid eyeliner. That's just my opinion. The glitter in it, I don't know if you guys can see the top of the pencil, but the glitter in it is just too much and it's scratchy and it's irritating and the pencil itself like started out really creamy when I first got it but then it started drying out which just made the itchy scratchy feeling even worse so it's not something that I can really recommend I am not very impressed with anything we've gotten from Jante Blue in the boxy charms and I'm kind of hoping that this is a brand that just kind of doesn't show up anymore or we stop getting eyeliners from them or pencil anything from them because I would like to try something completely different from this brand. The, just give me something redeeming about it, please. <laughs> then we have the Butter London Glazen Lustrous Eyeliner. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm trying. It might not work. This one is a liquid eyeliner that has glitter in it. I don't know if you guys can see the glitter on my hand, but it does have glitter in it, and it works well. The only thing that I, one of the reasons I don't really like it is when I go to put it on my eye, it is not super black. Like if I have any eyeshadow underneath, it kind of picks up the eyeshadow and it kind of makes this like milky gray color with my eyeshadow. It doesn't matter what color it is. I could be pink and it goes milky gray on my eye and it just, it's not an attractive look. It's not what I'm going for. So yeah, this is just another one that I'm just not the biggest fan of this year. Okay, we have two eyeshadow palettes. One's not going to be so shocking. Another one tends to shock people. I'm just going to let you know. Um, the first one is the Baphomet palette from Belladonna Cupboard Cosmetics. I mean, I, 
I have this shade here is breaking. Um, and that is at no fault of my own. These are very, very dry shadows and very difficult to work with. You can wet your brush and work with them like paint, but in all honesty, this is probably one that I'm going to be um, decluttering from my collection. It has just been, I've had the worst experience with the brand, and then on top of it, I've heard hundreds of stories, and I'm not even exaggerating that number, hundreds of stories of people having just the worst time with this brand um and it's really sad to have to kind of put down an indie brand like that's not what any of us want to do here on youtube we want to build those brands up but when you have just poor customer service poor quality we're finding a lot of your stuff is coming from places that sell the same palette for like five dollars and you're selling it for like 45 like yes that's gonna rub the consumer wrong um it's just not what I wanted it to be. I wanted a neon eyeshadow palette. I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to be amazing and this was not that. So unfortunately this is probably something I'm going to declutter. I don't know if any of my friends want to try it or any of that uh, but I am going to declutter that palette. Okay so on to the one that shocks people and I believe I tried this this year. I don't know if I'm wrong. I apologize but or it was the end of last year, I don't know. I just, uh, and it's not a palette I necessarily want to get rid of because I really like the shimmers in this palette. I'm just gonna, it's the mattes for me. And that is the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. And I use this to create a look with um, my friend Annette's makeup corner here on YouTube. And I really do enjoy that look. Like it's not all of the mattes, it's just the mattes that I really, really want to use just do not work for me. And I've kind of tried to do things with this palette in different ways and it's just not working. But part of me thinks that I might depot all of the shimmers and the highlight in the center and just give a friend of mine the mattes. Because I... I don't know I'm not a fan of the mattes and I and it hurts me to say that because I'm a huge fan of BH Cosmetics like I love BH Cosmetics I order from them constantly which is partially why I'm going on a low buy next year because I have a BH Cosmetics problem which you guys will see when I do my like full eyeshadow palette collection video but I just really need to get this like the mats out of my life because every time I try to use them I'm just not impressed and I want to be impressed and I'm impressed with other BH Cosmetics palettes so that's just kind of how I feel about this one and I'm sorry if that upsets any of you guys or offends anyone but really I need to be honest here on my channel and that's just a palette that I can't get behind and I feel like I am in the minority on that with YouTube in general because everyone else seems to love it, I don't. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to get into the products that I loved in 2018. So, I'm just gonna let you know, a lot of these are eyeshadow palettes. A lot of these are from brands I've talked about. And yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna, we're just gonna get into it. The first thing that and this I've had in my collection for a while, and it's not a new product, um, but I really got a lot of use out of it this year. And that is the NYX Tame and Frame uh, Brow Pomade. I absolutely love, 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 love this pomade. I'm using a different one right now from Bella Pierre, and I'm just not a fan of it. It is a very dry pomade, where this one was a, a lot different of an experience for me. And I am hoping to pick one of these up before January. I don't have much time, but I need to pick one up, especially since my hair is dark again. And yeah, so we're gonna um, try and pick one of these up. I absolutely love this brow pomade. I'm, I'm very happy with it. And it lasted an entire year. I had it in a project pan and you guys will see the update on this. I'm very happy with where I ended up with this specific product. Just, just letting you know. The next thing, and this has become my favorite 
mascara. It is the Wander Beauty Unlash Volume and Curl Mascara. I mean, I've used it so much that like the writing is coming off of this. So that goes to show you how much I love it. Um, it's almost gone. It says it's good for six months, which is different than other mascaras. So nothing's happened to my eyes yet. But this is one that I will definitely um, be purchasing at some point in 2019 because I just really love it. I love what it does for my lashes. It curls my lashes without me having to use the lash curler. I have a fear of eyelash curlers. I hate them. I feel like I'm gonna pull my lashes out or somebody is going to do something and I'm gonna pull my lashes out when I use them. So I just do not reach for an eyelash curler. I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, but I do really, really love this mascara, and I do recommend, if you have not tried it, to give it a try. It is a more pricey mascara. I believe it is $24, but it is one that I absolutely love. Up next is the Pretty Vulgar, the Ink Gel Eyeliner in Blacklist. I am almost out of this. I'm rationing my uses. I'm using it more for, like, special occasions than, like, just filming on YouTube because I love, love, love this eyeliner. Um, I believe this is around $24 or $26, somewhere in that range. Uh, but I do really like, love it. It is one of the blackest gel eyeliners I have in my collection. And it stays. And that is very important to me because on the corners of my eyes, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on my channel, but my eyes kind of run right on the corners there. And I'll get these like weird lines of uh, liner. And this, that does not happen with this. And that is huge for me. And I've become such a fan of gel eyeliner again because of this product that I'm so glad it was in our boxy charm. It is one of my absolute favorites. And I highly recommend, if you haven't tried it, that you should definitely go give this a try. Then we have the Koki uh, Professionals Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. This is a concealer that I like to use for spot concealing as well as for an eyeshadow primer and it works very very well as both of those things. I am a huge fan of a lot of Koki uh, products and then I'm not such a huge fan of others. My problem with this is their shade range in general just needs some revamping I'm gonna be honest like they definitely need darker deeper shades and some lighter shades in there. Um, they're kind of like middle of the range and very beige <laughs> if I'm honest but I do really um, like the concealer and I like the way it sits on my skin. I like that it covers things up and it works really well as an eyeshadow primer. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the Hasina 2 palette. So I was looking at all of my eyeshadow palettes and thinking about all the ones I tried and I kept gravitating towards this one. I love the shades in this one. I absolutely love what they did. I love that they did something completely different in the color story of this. I am a huge fan of purples and greens and this palette, the moment I saw it, I was like, that is going in my collection. And I'm very glad that I said that. I do really like the quality of the shadows and I enjoy playing with this. It was hard for me to pick one of the blush tri palettes that I really, really like. And um, just because I like all of the ones that I have, but this one kept sticking out to me and this one, is my favorite so <laughs> so far I have many more blush tried palettes to try I'm sure but I really 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 love this palette the next eyeshadow palette I want to talk about is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette now I would not say this is a purple palette but I do absolutely love the color story in this and I love the shades um, some of my favorite shades are eccentric celestial love and wild child. I really, really love those shades. I love kind of playing with this. Um, as you can see, I've gotten a lot of use out of the shimmers. I use them all the time, you guys. Even when I'm not actually using this palette, I love to pair this with my Modern Renaissance palette. I think they pair beautifully, especially with those red tones and the kind of the orangey and just the overall berry vibe, kind of mixing it with some of these um, pinker tones and cool tone shadows is a lot of fun to do. So that's why I bought this palette and 
I was very glad when I got it that it actually did pair very well with the Modern Renaissance. In my opinion, that's how I enjoy using it. That's how I enjoy playing with it. Um, but I am someone who's a fan of a lot of Anastasia's pro um I'm a fan of a lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow um, palettes, and so this was one that I had to have in my collection. Do I own all of the Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes? No, I don't, because I know that there are just some that I'm not going to reach for, but this was one that I knew I would reach for. The next thing that I really do like, and I don't think I use it on camera as often as I should, and that is the Note Luminous Silk Compact Blusher. I really love the shade of this blush. It is very kind of orangey, uh, peachy, if you will. It's called Desert Rose. And it's just one of those products in BoxyCharm that just, I, I was like, ooh, I really like this product. I really, really like it. So I am glad to have used it. I love the way it sits on my skin. I love the way it looks, um, especially with me being much fairer in the winter. I just like the way it sits nicely on my skin. We have, I think, three more products. But the next one I want to talk about is the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale Palette. And this one really surprised me, but I think it's because it's a very cool tone eyeshadow palette, and I don't have a ton of cool tone shadows in my collection. And I really like creating looks with this one. I don't feel like the shadow's muddy on me as some other people do. Um, but this, this has made me want to try the, the vast majority of pretty vulgar products I've gotten to try through BoxyCharm has just made me want to try more. There is another eyeshadow palette by Pretty Vulgar in the same kind of setup that is their very colorful one that I really do hope to try soon. We shall see. But I really like the quality of the shadows. I was very impressed when I used this. When I first opened it up, I was like, it's very neutral. This just isn't something that I usually gravitate towards. Ah, but I like it. I like it a lot. The next product is the Revolution Conceal and Define Full Coverage Concealer. I freaking love this stuff, and I am definitely going to be purchasing this in the future. I love it underneath my under eyes. It reminds me of the Tarte Shape Tape, and I was somebody who liked the Tarte Shape Tape. Uh, so this being similar in consistency to that is what I really like for my under eyes and just highlighting of my face. I really, really like this. I'm using C1, so I'm really brightening my face because this is really light for me, but I like it for what I use it for and I was very impressed with the quality of it and I will be definitely purchasing more of this in the future. The final product that I want to talk about on my favorites list was actually one that quite surprised me when I was looking through things and really thinking about my top 10 favorite products. And I just want to throw this out there. I know about the controversy with the brand owner that is going on right now or that went on and I'm just, this is a rare gem for me from this brand. I'm gonna say that, okay? And that is the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. I really like this palette, you guys. Like, I really like it. I really enjoy it. And I was shocked because I only have one other Too Faced palette in my collection and that is the Just Peachy Mattes. And I was not expecting to like this. I, I really bought this for the packaging, but the quality of the shadows, in my opinion, is much better than some of the other quality in Too Faced shadows. Like, I wish they could get just a consistent um, eyeshadow quality. Like, are you gonna be good? Like, that's my problem with Too Faced in general. I don't know if it's going to be good, and that is not something as a consumer I appreciate. But I really do like this palette. I'm very wary when it comes to Too Faced. So when I saw this, I was like, I want it because of the packaging. And I gave in and I bought it because of the packaging, but it was pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed a lot of the shades. So yes, well, 
there is kind of my wrap up of my least favorite products of 2018 and my most favorite products of 2018. I am so glad to be filming again and I do hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. It does mean so much to me. I am very thankful for each and every one of you who have subscribed to my channel or who just watch my videos. It does mean a lot to me. Well, thank you guys so much and I do hope that you have a wonderful day, night, wherever you are and bye!